But it's not the weird. The other weird thing about that film is that in it, if you remember, like uh, Mel Gibson makes a big deal about the fact that Edward II, the English prince, was gay, right? As if not only did he oppress the Scots, but he did it in a kind of a gay way, <laughs> which makes it worse. But the irony is, again, it's not mentioned in the film that William Wallace Braveheart, your national hero himself, was actually gay. And no, he was, uh, sir. And we know this from some information that's come to light in the last couple of years. Firstly, about two years ago, they found a cache of love letters hidden in a nook at, uh, <laughs> at uh, Glam's Castle or somewhere. <laughs> and the letters were exchanged between William Wallace and Robert the Bruce, and they were full of <laughs> declarations. They were. They were full of declarations of love and details of their, of their sexual encounters, very, very vigorous sexual encounters that they had. But that's one thing. Then about a year ago, they found some uh, graffiti on uh, a wall, <laughs> on an old Scottish wall, on the wall, <laughs> the wall, on the wall of a broch, actually, which is <laughs> the broch of Gurness, <laughs> which is a real place in uh, the Orkneys. They found it there, <laughs> and it said. Um, the graffiti, which is real, existed. It said, uh, I am a gay. <laughs> Signed, William Wallace. <laughs> Braveheart, and the Braveheart bit was in inverted commas, so they knew that meant it was real. <laughs> it was like a fun nickname, you know, it's like real. So, uh, so uh, William Wallace Braveheart, our national hero, was gay. And, when I, and you know, when I was talking about this in Edinburgh in the summer, people were going, well, why didn't we know about that? You know, why is... And the reason is, because the graffiti and the letters were written in Gaelic, so it wasn't translated. And people were going, well, why wasn't it translated? That's just the ancient language of our nation, of the Scots. Why wasn't it translated? But it wasn't. What Gaelic actually was, was a very kind of highly evolved form of medieval Scottish homosexual patois. <laughs> and the clues in the name, if you look at it, right, Gay lich, that means gay, homosexual gay, and then lich is language or tongue. So Gaelic is literally the language of gays. And, you know, I was booed off at the assembly rooms for saying this in Edinburgh, but it's true, and I don't think it's a... I, have, I think it's really great that, that our national hero, uh, William Wallace, was gay, because Scot Scotland's always been a much more progressive, liberally-minded and kind of... A nation that's not afraid to show its feminine side, and I think that um, <laughs> compared to England, which is a very backward, kind of bigoted place, and I think that it's really good that as we enter the 21st century, one of your national folk heroes can embody a kind of progressive notion of sexual identity. I think that's a really brilliant thing, and I wish that some of the English uh, folk heroes, like uh, King Alfred or, or Robin Hood or King Arthur, had, had been gay, but <laughs> but they weren't. <laughs> And it's only William Wallace, <laughs> Braveheart, the Scottish one, that definitely was gay. And of course, another. Surely. Sorry? Robin Hood, surely. Someone uh, said Robin Hood was Man surely. Thanks. And someone uh, there saying Men in Tights. But of course, the Men in Tights edition to the Robin Hood legend was made in the 1980s by Mel Brooks, the. Uh, facility to make those kind of tights didn't exist in medieval England. <laughs> if it had it done, maybe they would have worn them. I'm sure that a thin, dernier tight is uh, an ideal garment for medieval combat. <laughs> Offering, as it does, no protection whatsoever <laughs> to the human leg. <laughs> but, of course, the other major inaccuracy about that film, of course, is in the Middle Ages there was no such country as Scotland. Scotland was actually invented, as you all know, in 1911 by the McGowan Sweet Company as a way of marketing Highland toffee. Because, of course, traditionally we think toffee's better if it's manufactured at a high altitude. 